Hey guys, Constance here. Welcome back to A Good Life Farm. So, I have a story to tell. Um, every so often, something very unusual happens here on the homestead. Um, homesteading is definitely an adventure. And as adventurous as it may be at times, some days are a little more adventurous than others. Um, I have had a crazy 48 hours. Uh, so I'm just going to start at the beginning. Um, we have had things show up here on our property in the past. Uh, the first year that we lived here, I had a gigantic bull show up in my yard. Um, I shared that story in a video. I'll put a link down below if you would like to, to hear what happened with that story. Um, you know, we had a goat show up here um, last year, I think it was, maybe the year before. So things, things show up from time to time. Well, the other night, two nights ago, I had run an errand and was coming home. And as I was walking up to the door, I heard a sound out there somewhere. And I thought it was my donkey or mule, because it was kind of out that way. And I thought they had like made this sound and I thought, well, that was weird. What was up with that? Didn't think anything of it. And I just went in the house, you know, it was dark, it was evening. And um, we were getting ready to go to bed and let the dogs out like part of our typical evening routine. And the dogs started going crazy. Now I have talked in the past how wild pigs or feral swine, there's, there's kind of two different things, but they're sort of grouped together, um, are very dangerous. They're very dangerous creatures. Um, they are the reason that when I can tell they've been around or I see suspect I see signs of them, I always make sure I have Betsy accompanying me into the woods and all of that because, um, you know, a sow with piglets is one of the most dangerous things there is. Not to mention a, an angry boar or anything like that. We, I look outside and sure enough, there's about, I think it was five pigs right out there helping themselves to the remains of the chicken feed. Well, of course, the last thing we want are, are wild hogs up here by the house. I mean, we know wild hogs are around. We've seen them on camera in the past. A lot of times what we see are feral swine because they're like spotted pigs that look like normal pigs from a farm that have just gotten loose and gone wild. But they do show up from time to time. However, they never come anywhere near the house. And anytime there was any sign of humans, they bolt. They are gone. They don't want anything to do with you. Mr. Smith went out there and ran them off because they wouldn't leave. They were just there. They were ignoring us. They were ignoring the dogs going crazy. They didn't care. So he ran them off. They came right back. He ran them off again. They came right back. He ran them off again. He did this like three or four times and they kept coming back. And a few minutes later, he, he looked and he hollered because I had gone back into the house and he's like, they're everywhere. And I said, what? He's like, I think somebody's farmer's pigs had gotten out. So I went outside and I looked and they were everywhere. They're everywhere. <laughs> and these pigs did not care at all that we were standing there. We were sitting there talking. The dogs were going crazy. They were completely oblivious, completely did not care that humans were there, 
or anything like that. So we were like, these have to be from a farm. They've got to be from a farm. So I called the sheriff. The sheriff's office was glad to know where they were because there had already been reports of these pigs out causing car accidents. As a matter of fact, on the highway west of my town, um, a big boar had gotten hit by a car. So it, this was a danger. So they were happy to know where they were and indicated that somebody was going to come out. Nobody came. We stayed outside for quite a while just watching pigs everywhere. You know, we would watch them. They would kind of move off, going off like they were going to go back off into the woods. And, you know, we have motion activated solar lights that are attached to our fences out there. And they would go away and then here they come. You'd see all the lights, ding, ding, coming on as they're coming around the fence. And here they come again and right up back into the yard. So we stayed out there until probably almost one o'clock in the morning. Just flabbergasted and we could not not believing our eyes of what we were seeing and we finally went to bed got up in the morning and the pigs had not left the pigs were still here sound asleep out there in the yard bedded down in the straw that I had put out because we get muddy in the winter perfectly content a sleeping pile of pigs all but one there was one great big boar who was up kind of walking around and one of the things they did get into that night was my barrel out there that was full of goat feed. Um, they did knock that over and so he, he walked over there behind the fence and was just chomping, you know, snacking, having some breakfast and um, I let the dogs out into the backyard and when I did, he ran off to the side, turned around, stopped, and then ran past the fence to the pile of pigs, snorting. And when he did, they all jumped up and they all ran off into the woods. And we were just in shock and relieved, honestly, that the pigs were gone because they looked like wild pigs. They looked like wild pigs, and all I could think is, how am I gonna go out here and feed my chickens? How am I going to do chores when my yard has been taken over by dangerous wild pigs? So we did our chores, we did all that, and, and <laughs> drank some coffee because we were exhausted from almost no sleep. Sophie and Amos are not eating. They are too busy watching the woods right now. I know they're just out there waiting for their opportunity. And they rooted all here in front of the blackberries. Dug that all up. What is it, Stump? Hmm? Smell them piggies. Stumper's like, let me get them. I'll get them. Loose, have you noticed any pigs running around lately? Yeah, you heard that right. Pigs. Morgan County deputies had an eventful Sunday evening. Deputies say a pack of pigs were running loose on Highway 36 in Springdale Road in Hartzell. The pigs somehow escaped from a farm. Officials sat or say they are roaming because of recent flooding and they're crossing roads at this point. It's already caused a few accidents and deputies say if you see any of these pigs roaming, just give them a call. And about two hours later, here came two sows. A big sow with some sort of like growth or hernia or something, tumor. She had something on her abdomen and a little sow and they just walked right up to the chicken feed and started helping themselves well mr smith was like these pigs don't care because we're outside and they just walked right up he's like they've got to be tame pigs 
Now, somebody had reached out to me and said they look a little bit like American guinea hogs. Maybe they are because there was rumors that a farmer in the area had had a contract with a barbecue place and lost the contract and got mad and let his pigs out. Didn't want them anymore and just let them all go. Didn't know if the story was true, but if it was true, that that's, that was the kind of pigs that this guy had been raising. Um, and they kind of looked like those. So I thought, well, maybe. I mean, they look like wild pigs, but they're tame. They don't care about people. So maybe they were. Mr. Smith went and got a scoop of feed. And as soon as he grabbed that scoop of feed, the little sow was like, oh, what you got? And followed him over to the fence. Then it got nervous and it kind of backed off. And then the big sow looked at the bucket of food. Mr. Smith was shaking a bucket and it walked right into the fence. So we caught one. And then that young sow kind of took off. Well, here we were in shock. Can't believe we've got a big old pig in our fence. What are we going to do with the pig? <laughs> Pigs were not really part of our current plan. <laughs> She's like, what the heck is that? Jumper, it's a piggy piggy. We went about our day, did the things that we needed to do, and evening rolled around and we went outside to do chores. Fed Sophie and Amos, fed the goats, did all this stuff, and here they came. The whole herd of pigs. And with all these pigs coming back up into the yard, we're like, oh my word, what are we going to do? Maybe we can catch a few more of them. Maybe we can lure them into the fence with the other pig. So we go out there, we're shaking the buckets and all that stuff, and they take off. And they took off towards the neighbors. So I mess messaged the neighbors, said, hey, the pigs are headed your way. So he has a pen over there and he had a bucket. And so he went out and he was shaking the bucket, trying to lure the, the pigs over to his pen so that he could catch the pigs. So he was out there calling them, pig, 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 shaking the bucket. And they went off through the woods towards his place. And then you could hear them kind of moving through the trees, moving through, moving through. Well, then they started coming back. Watch for that boar. And they went around like Amos and Sophie's area and one of them went in there and Amos was having none of it. So he chased that pig around until that pig darted through and got away. Now most of the herd stayed off back by the trees, but one young sow, we think maybe the one that was up here earlier in the day, came right up towards the fence again, like looking at the other pig, the one that we had caught. And we thought, well, maybe we can get that one in there. So we opened the gate the big sow who was in there kind of stood off and we and was just kind of chill and in came the little one. So now we had two. So we're standing in there with these pigs, the two pigs, and all the rest of them are just roaming around, eating the chicken feed, going around the fence and all this stuff. Uh, and then next thing you know, 
here came two, two big ones, a big boar and a big sow, came right towards the gate. And Mr. Smith opens the gate, or I open the gate. I'm in, at this point, he and I are both inside the fence with, with the two pigs. And here comes the two big ones. And they are kind of looking at the gate, like thinking maybe they'll come through. And we sprinkle some feed out and they kind of come on in. And the one is a big, big boar. And when it steps in and it stops, Mr. Smith is in the corner of the fence right there. And just the look on his face. I mean, when we made eye contact, he's in the corner looking at this giant boar. The look on his face is like, what are we doing? <laughs> kind of like my response with the, the bull that showed up. Well, he takes his hand and he puts it up on top of one of the posts just in case he needs to jump. Well, next thing you know, we're, we're doing this. That big pig and the big sow, the big boar, they came right in. And next thing you know, here they all come, the whole group. I'm standing there, I've got the gate open between, and I've got like the gate between me and the, and the pigs. Mr. Smith is right there two feet away in the corner on the other side of the gate. And the whole herd of pigs just comes right in the fence. And we sling the gate shut. And we, went, we get outside of the fence and I just, I started rolling. I'm like, I can't believe we just caught all the pigs. Oh! We were, abs we are still in shock, okay? We are still in shock. And the pigs were calm, like they didn't care. Totally didn't care that they were in a fence. Totally didn't care that there were people there. It's like they were meant to be there, or they thought. So there's the first part of this crazy story. So last night is when we caught all of these pigs, all but one. There was one, a, a young boar, who was still out in the woods. And after we had caught the entire herd, about 20 minutes later or so, he came up out of the woods, but he is fast and he is skittish and we cannot get anywhere near him. Uh, he has vanished at the moment, but we are expecting he will probably show up again tonight um, because he kind of wants to be by the other pigs, but he doesn't want to be anywhere near us. Um, but we got almost the entire herd, the whole herd saved one. So this morning I had a few errands to run and one of the errands that I needed to do was I went by the county animal shelter where I used to do a bunch of volunteering for quite some time. I wanted to see, hey, are there any reports of a farmer losing his pigs? And they're like, why do you ask? And I told them what happened. And they said, those aren't domestic pigs. Those are wild pigs. And I'm like, but they're tame. They're like, they're tame? And I'm like, yeah. I showed them the pictures, I showed them what happened, and they were flabbergasted. Now the guy who works there, the, the one guy, oh, by the way, that's Otto. That's a whole different story. The, the guy who works there currently, um, this is a guy I had not met before. Well, he knew a bit about pigs. And he said, those are not the breed you thought they were. He's like, they do look a little bit like this one other breed, except here's, and he showed the different traits and all this stuff. This is how you know these aren't those. He goes, those are wild pigs, like classic wild pigs. He's like, and they shouldn't be tame. And one of the reasons that he knew that they are wild pigs is because that great big boar that got hit, hit by a car and was dead on the side of a road uh, he had to go out there and investigate, and he's like, that thing was every bit of 300 pounds, and they couldn't move it because um, they were trying to load it up and, and get it out of there. Um, somebody else came and got it, but yeah. So he got a good close look at him, and they're like, yeah, these are, these are wild pigs, and we cannot believe you caught them. And so we ended up having a long conversation about the pigs and, and the game plan, Came back, talked to Mr. Smith, told him what had happened, what we talked about, what the, you know, the consensus was and all this. And he's like, well, maybe we need to check with um, like DNR and that stuff. And I'm like, all right. So I headed to our county extension office because our county extension office 
is also um, USDA, it is uh, Department of Conservation, you know, there's like many offices in this building. I'm like, if I go in the wrong office, they will know who I need to talk to. So I go in there, tell them, tell them the situation, what's going on. Once again, they cannot believe we caught these pigs. And they cannot believe these pigs are tame. Cannot believe it. Absolutely mouth agape shocked. So are we. <laughs> the consensus about why these wild pigs are actually tame, and I mean they're tame. They are completely fine with people. We can walk out there, we can walk in the pen. They don't care. It's like, it's like they are just normal, calm, tame mm -hmm. pigs. Not come pet me tame, but hey, how you doing? What you got? Tame. So the consensus is what everyone thinks probably happened is that someone had caught some young wild pigs and was raising them. And then either they got out, they were let out because maybe someone couldn't afford the feed or intentionally let out because and the guy at the animal shelter said this there has been situations where people have raised up some wild hogs and then let them go on public land and have done that so that they could then have a population that they could go and hunt and the creek that we have out here runs for many many miles and they have known about wild hogs um, running uh, through these areas, all through the nature preserve, I mean just all through the area, but they've never seen, they've never seen numbers like this, they've never seen a herd like this, and they've never, ever been tame. So that is what they think happened. Somebody raised them, and then they were let out or got out, one or the other, and here they are. So. What are we going to do with wild pigs? Um, first of all, wild pigs <laughs> aren't like regular pigs and there's a lot of laws regarding them. For one thing, you cannot transport a live wild pig. It's illegal in the state of Alabama, probably other places too. Um, you can only transport a wild pig if it has been dispatched. Um, so that is one thing, that, that's kind of like the toughie. Um, especially because some butchers will only take an animal if it is still alive. It just depends on the butcher. Now, if you have ones who do wild hogs, then they're okay with it, but there, there's a lot of finagling that takes place. Um, so we have friends who definitely want pigs. People say they want pigs, of course, saying you want one and then actually following through isn't always the same thing, but we'll see. Uh, that said, if we get to where we've still got some left, I mean, we can't let them go. They are wild pigs. Pigs in general are a problem here in Alabama. They're mostly a problem in Southern Alabama, but they have become a problem all through Alabama and in other states as well. Uh, they're very destructive, they are dangerous, they destroy crop fields, they, I mean, they're just straight up dangerous, bad, <laughs> and all that. Um, and, and really, that was part of the reason we wanted to try to catch them, because even if we didn't want to eat them ourselves, if we had the ability to stop these pigs from becoming more of the problem here of the wild pig, feral swine population, if we have the ability to do it, then that's a good thing. Um, because they are such a problem here. Of course, now they've become our problem, <laughs> but um, it, it's fine. Um, we do what we can to help, be good stewards, and all of that, and yeah. We've almost bit off a little more than we can chew with this one. But uh, after I talked with the people there at the office, um, if we do find ourselves in a situation where we don't have takers for all of them, uh, there are people there who can help us out and all of that. So we won't be stuck with all these pigs. So our homestead was invaded by wild pigs. And I don't even eat pork. <laughs> 
it's almost like a joke. Almost like, well, we knew you wouldn't eat us, so we're gonna come to your farm. Yeah. It's crazy, this is crazy. But in any case, uh, we made the news. Uh, well, not all of it, just the fact that they were all running around out here on our property. Uh, that made the news. It was on our one of the local stations, picked it up and shared my video and, and images and things like that. Never a dull moment here on the homestead. I'm almost afraid to ask what happens next. Like, what's the next big adventure going to be? Because I, I don't know how you get any crazier than this. <laughs> um, we did not get anywhere near all of the pigs. There's a ton of them out. They are everywhere. I don't think we even got half of them. There was just, they were all out here just now. They were running along the fence line. They were running past the goats. They are everywhere. Oh my gosh. You know, we have these, these ones that we caught and we were gonna give people time to like make arrangements to take them and, and butcher them or whatever. They're gonna have to go. We, we cannot keep them here because they're just gonna keep, they're gonna draw in the other ones. We've already run them off multiple times. And one of them, oh my gosh, it's humongous. It is a beast and it is every bit of 300 pounds or more. And it had these huge tusks. So, I've got to start making some phone calls, and I think I'm going to have to start shooting pigs. Because we cannot risk, we can't risk these being around here. Somebody's going to get hurt, or worse. People, animals, something. So, gosh, I mean, we thought we, thought we had done something great by containing these and maybe saving them from being a problem for people. It's a lot bigger than we thought.